This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Support for TV tuners comes from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Guys, you ever have untrimmed pubes? It's gross. <gasps> who wants them? Not me. Only I did. freaks. I did. I nearly died. That's right. Well, they're a thing of the past now, thanks to Manscaped. And look, the holiday season is coming up, and there's no better gift you can give for yourself or a loved one than the gift of a good shave. You know, below the belt. And that's why the man that's why we have the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Guys, I know every now and again, you know, you uh, hurt your balls while you're manscaping. Tell us about it, Stairmaster. <sighs> Well, one time in high school, I shaved my uh, pelvis, you know, to get rid of the bush. But I used one of those disposable razor blades. Big mistake. Within a no. day, it was itching like a motherfucker. That's right. You cannot have that. And you won't have that when you get yourself a little manscaped. That's right. They have an electric trimmer. It's called the Lawnmower 2.0. But don't take our word for how good it is. We got someone here who actually owns it. Connie? What do you know about this lawnmower 2.0? Well, it uses a uh, ceramic blade, which uh, prevents it from rusting. That makes it uh, very safe to use on the most sensitive parts of your body. I know this because I used it and I didn't shoot blood everywhere all over the walls and floor and ceiling, which is what happened when I tried to use a non-manscaped electric razor. That's right. It's like a hell. It's like a scene from Hellraiser. Oh yeah, oh, we, I had to show you. <laughs> you beat me to it, you motherfucker. That's right. There's so many shite sites they can show you on this, uh, and that's not, a, not the only thing that this perfect package 2.0 has. All right. Yeah, sure. You can trim your nuts. You can feel great and fresh for the holiday season. But how about your balls smell? That's right. That's why this this perfect package includes the Crop Preserver. It's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer that's going to make the down below smell like dairy. Dairies. Daisies is what I meant to say. Dairies. Like daisies. Thank you for correcting. It's going to be like you're standing at the cash register in a car wash when you're done <laughs> with your balls. That's right. You can wipe down these balls. <laughs> Brian Cranston hasn't even knocked all the air fresheners down yet. <laughs> That's right. That's and my. Look, everyone uh, knows uh, the worst part about your armpits is that they smell. So why wouldn't you put why and you put deodorant on those? Why wouldn't you put them on the smelliest part of your body? I'm talking your balls. Yeah, your balls are actually worse about that. You don't know that because you got pants on. But if you ever pay attention when those come off, like before you get in the shower. If you haven't been using oh, something yeah. like this, oh, it's it's a nightmare. That's right. And it's not, believe it or not, that isn't it. There's <sighs> yeah, there's something else in this perfect package. You can get yourself a pair of Manscaped boxer briefs. And they're going to keep your junk feeling fresh all day long. And people don't have to see your balls if you don't want them to anymore. That's right. You can keep these perfectly trimmed balls to yourself. Under lo yeah, under lock and key. By which I mean you're putting boxers over them. No more indecent exposure charges. That's right. And you can get this for yourself, your dad, your brother, anybody on the list. You can give them the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code BIGHEADS at manscaped.com. That's right. And your balls, they're going to thank you when they see this hanging out under the tree. That's right. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BIGHEADS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BIGHEADS. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year.
Hi there, folks, and welcome to TV Tunes. It's a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive of the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co-host and wealthy and mysterious client, Stairmaster. Perhaps they have forgotten how to live in a world without Star Wars. Oh, yeah. There was a brief time where we did sort of live in a world without Star Wars. You remember when Revenge of the Sith was over and we were all like, I guess that's it. Yeah, and then we got that Clone Wars movie that was half finished. Yeah. Good times. With us this week is our guest and uh, returning guest, by the way, Connie. Hi, I'm Connie. I have no gender and ambivalent feelings about Star Wars, but I do have they, them pronouns and a lot of things to yell about today. That's right. Uh, And... We're getting ready to yell. We're all going to scream. Ah! Ah! Is that a scream? Ah! Okay, <laughs> there you go. You, That's we, more like we got a it. Wilhelm scream. I appreciate that. Oh, oh, oh. You, you don't have clipping audio to deal with. Just oh. so enjoy that. Yeah, oh, no. These a... waveforms are good to me. To you. Yeah, they're barely at the top. You don't see mine. So. Oh, oh. Dun, dun. All right, so uh, yes, welcome to TV Tuners. If you like what you're hearing so far, why not go over to uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, any of the podcasters of your choice. Give us a subscribe. Yeah, we're on the pit front page of Manscaped.com. You can see uh, my balls. That's right. It's kind of like Goatsy, but in but in reverse. <laughs> it's just being pushed. It's shut. the antipode. <laughs> Um, you can head on over to any of those podcatchers, give us a subscribe and a five-star review. It'd be very much appreciated. Extremely. Uh, we're also available on Twitter. I still haven't done I'm... that review. I should probably do that. <laughs> Whoa, yes, we very much appreciate it, Connie. Especially as a two-time guest. <laughs> okay, um, I'll do it. You can also find us on Twitter, at TV Tuners, and use the hashtag TV Tuners, and we'll give a glance at what you're saying. Uh, and also, of course, if you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, or otherwise, send them to us at the TV Tuners Podcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Stairmaster? Uh, television Tuners Podcast at manscapingforyourballs.com. That's right. You can be like Andrew, who sent us an email titled Fargo. Andrew writes, You all see <laughs> that the- Fargo <laughs> show? It's P. Good. Andrew. E Canada. Mm, I would argue it's B good. As in very good? Yes. As opposed to pretty good. Yes. So, and that's like, what's the metric? It's good, pretty good, very good? Yes. And then what, great? No, very good. Well, wait, so very good, there's no great, it's just very good? Yes. That's the highest honor? No, there's there's also E good. Extremely good. Oh. (laughs) Like Chernobyl is E good, but you would say Vargo is only V good. <laughs> is it because the third season's a little weak? I never, uh, yeah, I uh, never got past the pilot, so I guess it is. I'm gonna blame <laughs> the show for that and not my laziness. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've only seen the first season, so I can only say that that's pretty good. And Keo's only seen the second season. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't seen the first or the third, just the second. <laughs> What this fights? Is this an anthology show? Yeah, it's not connected, so it's fine. Um, but Connie yeah, Stairmaster, you're the, the Fargo expert here. I guess. Connie, have you seen any of Fargo? I no? I am aware that Fargo is the name of a TV show. But have you seen the movie? I don't know anything else. <laughs> okay. That have is... you seen No Country for Old Men? Yeah. Is it kind of like that? Like that. Call it's it like that, now. but l- but less serious. I'm not calling it. <laughs> You've been calling it your whole life, Connie. <laughs> you don't have to do this. Oh, we're going to talk about TV, and you're going <laughs> to like it. <clears throat> oh no, these ropes appeared and tied me down to my chair. <laughs> I can't leave. Right. How'd you do this? Well, I'm something of a magician, by which I mean I have sold my soul to the devil for the powers of magical ropes. 
and podcasting. <laughs> yeah, and podcasting. I mean, how else do you think I got that Manscaped ad? Oh, thanks to Manscaped. Once it's making more ropes than ever. <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, that's a good. That's a good. Stairs, stairs got riff of the week. Boom. All right. Uh, you guys watch anything? Uh, Interesting this week. Well, uh, to prepare for this week's show, I watched a real life Mandalorian, Wesley Snipes. Oh yeah, I guess I he watched, has sort of Mandalorian tendencies. I watched his breakout hit, Passenger Fifty Seven. It's uh, is that a hit? I've never heard of it. Uh, well, it was the one that got him on the map and gave him his signature line: "Always bet on black." Where does that movie fit into the Blade timeline? Because that's the only way I can relate to Wesley Snipes. Okay, yeah, so true. this is like one of those parallel arts where he was his mom was never bitten by a vampire, so he just grew up to be an FBI agent. And oh, less interesting. Expert. So Blade's not in this at all? No. Oh, he's a cop? Yeah. Oh, well, he's a retired cop. He, he, let his, about it. he let his wife get shot in the face during a liquor store robbery. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> when you think he's... about it, Blade is sort of a vampire cop. Mm. No, I would say that the vampires are the cops. I think what they do, most of the vampires in these Blade movies, what they do is highly uncop like. <laughs> Such as the use of swords. But yeah. also, like, one of the first things we see in Blade is the police coming after Blade because he shot up a vampire and set They're... him on fire. Hmm. Perhaps it is the police who are the enemy. <laughs> yes. And I mean, Dracula owns land. He's a landlord. Oh, yeah, I got a can't. Can't Dracula cancelled. Uh, an entire castle in Transylvania. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that we shouldn't. He shouldn't be able to go outside of that without us yelling at him, like Mitch <laughs> yeah. McConnell. And that, and that's what Blade is here for. He's here for regulation. <laughs> anyway, what about this movie? Oh, it's like very badly written. So at its core, it's about a it's a diehard on a plane type. But for the middle forty minutes, they get off the plane and have a deadly cat and mouse chase in a fair country fairground. There's a layover. Yes, in the plane okay. heist movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, the action's great. You got Wesley Snipes doing his signature kung fu. Well, not kung fu, but you know what I mean. I was going to be very confused. I don't remember Wesley Snipes as a kung fu expert. This is a cat and mouse chase at a county fair. Yes. Is this, the terrorist does he, does leader. He run and... in, does he run into Hopper at the same time from Stranger Things? Yeah. <laughs> no, I wish. There's a crossover here. Is this, I'm pretty then... sure Hopper would be dead of old age by now. This took place in like 1992-ish. Okay, that, that's what you dead of old age. Yeah, he doesn't seem to live a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> a no, decade he'll gone, later, he'll be gone at like forty nine. But it's okay because right before he goes, since we're linking all these shows together, it's gonna zoom out and you're gonna see a snow globe. <laughs> no, oh wait. yeah. No, please, not that. Also, that's... spoilers: he may already be dead. When Hopper dies, he's just gonna fade away, and all of his old history is closed. <laughs> he's gonna re- he's gonna rejoin the Force. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we tie it into Star Wars. You see what we're doing there? Anyway, the script is, yeah, pretty bad, but you get Wesley Snipes throwing a guy off a Ferris wheel to his death. Is there a Wilhelm scream? No, there's no Wilhelm screams. Damn. Also, I watched Drop Zone starring Wesley Snipes. So, imagine Point Break, but instead of Keanu Reeves, it's Wesley Snipes, and there's only skydiving. (laughs) Nothing else. (laughs) Oh my god, that's a way better way to summarize it. (laughs) That's... That's uh, so it's just they substitute surfing for skydiving, and that's it. Yes, yes, and there's still Gary Busey. Wait, Gary Busey's in this? Yes, but this time he's the co- he's the criminal. Oh, <laughs> try and catch me if you can. Instead, Malcolm Jamal Warner plays Busey's Point Break equivalent, and gets sucked out of a jumbo jet to his death. Hope you learned your lesson, Theo. <laughs> I took, I put you into this world, and now I'm taking you out of it. <laughs> what 
I need someone uh, to say that, that they can't like a live good in a movie. I need someone to say they can't live in a cage before they jump out of the plane. I mean, there's some very impressive skydiving shots, but the problem is the movie is like almost entirely skydiving shots. And so uh, I'm assuming the actors are not the ones skydiving. No. According to Wikipedia, their insurance policies precluded that. Michael Jeter did a skydiving stunt, though. Well, I, I guess, I guess that's good for him. I was just, <laughs> one, I mean, I would watch the movie waiting to see Wesley Snipes do some skydiving. No. He, uh, he he's couldn't too much of a slice. national treasure for that. They're right. You're right. He couldn't. They couldn't afford it. He's just, he's this generation's Denzel Washington. <laughs> Wait a minute, Denzel Washington is in our generation? That's the joke. <laughs> uh, I guess you're right. Oh man, Michael uh, Jeter died in 2003. What was it, skydiving? Mm, he had an epileptic seizure. Oh, less fun. Also, he was HIV positive, but that had nothing to do with it. Was it from the skydiving? Probably. Get, <laughs> there was a get, needle. Can... He flew into a needle. Oh no! One of the biggest risks of skydiving. <laughs> there's a there's a nearby tornado at the HIV factory. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, one tornado and just hits, goes and hits Skid Row. Yeah, just uh, then the debris goes up into the sky. Gets you while you're skydiving. It's actually the main cause of skydiving death. Not a lot of people are talking about this. It makes oh, you think. God. It's being thrown under the rug because they don't also, want you to know. Also, I rewatched Terminator Two. Very spiritually enriching. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel a, a Terminator re- rewatch coming on. Yes. Both of them. The, the, by the both of them, I mean the only ones that are good. Yeah, the first movie and then the oh, game fin- that just came out. <laughs> yes, Terminator Resistance. How's uh, Resistance spelled? The normal way. <laughs> Oh. What would you? What would it be spelled like in your head? Uh, R I S I T C E. What? Rest ice? That's right. <laughs> That's how you know it's cool. Yeah, it's like Genesis. <laughs> well, you know, there is precedent. All right. So, uh, I watched this week. Something equally as uh, at once engaging and offensive as Gary Busey skydiving. Rick and Morty. As ominous as the T-1000. Yes. It simply Some, won't uh, die. Something, something sets one sauce. <laughs> That's right. Mm, it's, it's hard to believe it's been two years. I have. Morty. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that stupid. <laughs> Almost as dumb as the episode. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's been almost been two years, hard to believe, since the franchise ate its own tail, or the fandom at least. Um, but yeah, it's back for more, and it's still kinda good? <laughs> By a certain definition of kinda. Well, yeah, I mean, it's funny, and the animation is really good, which is not something you get a lot with Adult Swim shows that aren't you Adventure say Brothers. A, would you say that it's a problematic fave at this point? Um... Yeah, probably. Yeah, I would say yeah. that very easily. <laughs> sort of like Bill Clinton. Mm. And all the other people implicated. In the I don't know if Bill level. Clinton is a fave. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think the problem mostly is that uh, a lot of people seem to really uh, appreciate Rick as a person to look up to when the show does not sort of condone that. But also the show itself does not push very hard against that mm-hmm. in any meaningful way. I'm going to go find it. I'm going to go tap the sign. <laughs> there What's it is. Like? There it is. Uh, regarding Rick. Yeah, here we go. Satire requires a clarity of purpose and target, lest it be mistaken <laughs> for and contribute to that which it intends to criticize. Mm. Well, yeah. it's got you there, Swanson true and i I would uh, i would agree it's not it's not very great at it uh that said it's still it's still entertaining enough it's a problematic fave (laughs) i i kind of lucked out with that show because i have only ever seen one episode by accident and it was the one with the memory parasites 
And I mean, that is a good episode, to be fair. I and don't like I, saying random bits and semi, you know, sketches, quotation marks. Yeah, do you see like, the the Death of Stranding ad? <laughs> yes. Well, oh. are they like, oh, Morty, we're stranding death, Morty. Oh, that's a death that, tragic, Ricky. It was literally about what you just did. It was like they got, <laughs> they kind of drew him in the outfits from the game, and it was just, you know. But the guy doing doing the, the same thing. voices he always does and kind oh. of referencing the games. Oh, Rick. Rick, I'm oh, birthing Rick, a baby, baby Rick. Now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I need to be reunited with my still mother. <laughs> oh, watch out for the shadow things, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that you, you jest, but that's oh, about how Matt shallow Nicholson's it was. taking me to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't doubt it. Most of their... Uh, most of the... Uh, advertisements of which there have been many including on uh wrestling programming that i've watched is has been just them sort of superficially being like get ready for this fuck wrestling overlapping that do you see kenny omega you can't see him you see kenny omega come out as sans (laughs) yes we all did as a nation we as a nation rejoiced yes it's finally the time for gamers Mm -hmm. rise up yeah, it was a uh, it was a joyful time for all of us. That was actually the same episode as the Rick and Morty cosplay. <laughs> now happened, I want to so. see if Kenny Omega come out with the BB, <laughs> and let's have everyone be confused. Well, someday we might get that. He's also previously cosplayed as Akuma from Street Fighter. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm... hell yeah! I saw a picture of that one. I didn't see it in video. It was good. Remember Akuma for a later when we ask Connie what he watched this week. And uh, he also frequently does the Hadouken as a wrestling move. <laughs> That sounds incredibly dangerous. Well, I mean, he doesn't, you know, no energy blast. He's not Ryu. It is kind of disappointing that that's all happening over on... What is that promotion's name? That's all. AEW? Uh, baby. AEW. Meanwhile, Dio Madden, the person, the commentator most appropriate to be seeing this stuff, is actually on Monday Night Raw. Oh. Yeah, doing jack shit. <sighs> yeah. H- having to sit next to a bland white dude and an old bland white dude. <laughs> It's okay. He's working in like a little bit of anime here and there, and like nerd shit when he can. Yeah, Just... he, you know they, they they try. That's the that's the important thing here. Anyway, uh, Connie, did you watch anything interesting this week? Uh, Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Whoa. Bebop. Huh. Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> um, so that's a show that I've only ever seen bits and pieces of, and I understand that it's very good, especially because <laughs> back when I would just. Yeah, back when I watched the little bits of it, like, the episodes I caught were, like, killer good-ass episodes. They were, um, the one with the fridge, one with the fridge (laughs) in the attic, and, uh... Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, watching that at 1 a.m. will fuck you up. Uh, Or... Mushroom Samba is the other one that I'm very Mm -hmm. endeared to. Did you see the one with the top hat guy, the escaped super soldier? (sighs) I don't think so. That doesn't Uh, ring a bell. Yeah, you don't want to see that at 1 a.m., the thing with Cowboy Bebop, the thing with Cowboy Bebop is that much like Rick and Morty, you have to have a big brain. To <laughs> you it all. need to have a high IQ. So thankfully, I do, and I'm watching it with all my very high IQ friends, and we oh. are up to episode five. So now I'm introduced to the idea that the show Half actually, plot. yeah, kind of has an overarching plot and isn't just like disconnected. Slice of life. Yeah, it kind of is slice of life until it's not, and then it goes back to being slice of life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the episode, a.k.a. when shit goes down. I told you how I was exposed to Cowboy Bebop, didn't I? Uh, tell it again. <laughs> so the first episode I ever saw was the penultimate episode, The Old Folks Blue Part 1, and then I saw the final episode the next week. And then I saw the first episode and thought they were doing some weird non-linear storytelling. You'd be like, wow, this anime is really going places. <laughs> Yeah, now I kind of feel that uh, grief that's lasted me with me for the, my entire life since then. All right, so let's all do that a, decade ago. It's time for a se- we'll do a recurring segment on TV Tuners where we watch Cowboy Bebop backwards. <laughs> oh, please! And not just episode order. We will reverse the episodes. <laughs> yes. So we see Spike. We see spoilers. We see Spike. No, no, no. We see Spike, and then we go back, 
And then we see Spike. He point, he <laughs> he you. he seems to be pointing at the camera, and then he goes gob, and then points his, <laughs> and then lowers his hand. That's right. That's okay. You figure that out while I get to uh, how Stairmaster promised me that I would be talking about Yakuza Zero. Yes. Promise. Well, there was some negotiation. Some knives were put on the table. Mm-hmm. And then removed comment. removed from the table, and then larger knives and smaller knives. Different, a lot of different varieties of knives. And then Connie started glowing blue, and he picked up a power generator and <laughs> dropped it on my head, and I was electrocuted at the same time I was crushed. So, you yeah. See it. Yakuza 0 is not a TV show. It's <laughs> better than a TV it. show. It is a video game. Which is uh, something that only people with very high IQs can enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a in gameplay. It's kind of a, just you know a classic fun beat 'em up with like kind of comically violent fist fights, like th- you know throwing whole motorcycles on people. Um, oh, but the man. story is a crime drama that I am so engrossed in. It is on the same level to me as Breaking Bad in terms of just being on the edge of my seat, like needing to see what happens next to these characters. And if you want to check out Yakuza 0, you can do that, especially if you want to watch someone stream Yakuza 0. Is that right? Yeah, that's the that's the word, streaming. Uh, <laughs> right? So I got a Twitch channel. I'm a Twitch affiliate. You know, it's just no, no big deal. Humble break. I, I've made uh, a couple cents. Um, so I stream uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays on twitch.tv slash tank controls to a very small but dedicated audience of my friends. And on Tuesdays, I'm playing... Tales of Symphonia, not going to really talk about that. Old RPG, tune very good. Tune, tune in, big tune in. If it's too old and shitty, play Tales of Vesperia. Don't play Tales of the Abyss, it's kind of shitty. That's the PS2 one. People say it's good, but that's because they are tasteless. And they're okay with like two hour long stretches of the game. where you are just running around talking to NPCs and raising quest flags. Um, that's kind of bullshit to me. Uh, Thursdays I'm playing Silent Hill 4, which is a black sheep in that series that's otherwise amazing. I've, I've Silent heard Hill 4 only bad room. things, I feel like, about Silent Hill 4. All I know about Silent Hill 4 is from what I saw of it in Nintendo Power. And I feel like they might have been <laughs> obscuring a few things about that game. It couldn't be Nintendo Power. It wasn't on the GameCube. What? No, it was. The GameCube no. could not handle Silent Hill 4. If they could handle Resident Evil 4, it could handle... Yeah, it was on it was on PS2 and Xbox. What the fuck? Yeah, it's the only been... one on the Xbox. X- no, that's not true. Two was I had a weird Xbox port. Um, but how did I hear? It? Maybe it was EGM. I don't know. It's it, no, it, that couldn't have been. I still had to be e- EGM until after that game came out. It'll be a mystery forever. Oh, and then Fridays Yakuza Zero. That game's fantastic. Of I, all time. I get in that game I get drunk and then I stab someone in the belly with an umbrella and then I open the umbrella and peek over the top of the <laughs> umbrella like like a wily little mischief maker and then I stab them in the throat from around the side of the umbrella and, and that, but these characters take off, they'll yeah. take off three quarters of their health uh huh because none of these fights are lethal in gameplay you finish fights with stuff like that happening, and then after the fight ends, they're just... They're like, oh, I'm so sorry! <laughs> oh, take this slightly battered salmon on X. No, 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 the people you save give you the items. You just take yeah. money from random encounters. You're right, I'm, and, I'm gonna anyways, uninstall the game, I'm a fakey gamer. Speaking of Akuma, when is Kazuma Kiru gonna be in Tekken? I don't fucking. It's so <laughs> obvious. Have, it yes, couldn't be like more a, obvious. Give him a style shift like Gin. Yes, it's so clear that that needs to happen. <laughs> Harada is a bastard man He's until this happens. I want to see. I want to see K- Kiru beat up Negan. I want to see Kiryu beat up Noctis because fuck <laughs> Noctis. Wow. 
Wow, I, I didn't realize we were on an episode of Game Grabbers, guys. Jeez. Yeah, bro. I, I, bro, I came in here with the intention of turning this into Game Grabbers, bro. Damn. It's, it's too late. All right, well, that's what we've been talking about on TV. Let's head over to the news. There's been a lot of talk about... There's been a lot of talk about Disney Plus as it launched this past week. Everyone so, loves it, and there's no criticism of Disney as a company. But right. perhaps there are some Disney minuses. Perhaps. <laughs> Yours is better. Uh, <laughs> it seems that on launch day, Disney Plus was consumed by numerous technical issues. I had those. Uh, while you were all, while we were all getting ready to load up and watch old episodes of The Simpsons, we'll do that in a second. <laughs> Uh-oh. Or uh, the new Mandalorian show, also in a second. Uh, or maybe if you wanted to watch Free Solo, because that's apparently on Disney for some reason. <laughs> uh, you could try and log in, but the odds are you were going to just be looking at a buffering window for the majority Ever. of your time. I, I, I hate to divert to something that was meant to be a throwaway line, but what is Free Solo? Uh, Free Solo is a movie about... Um, rock climbing i think wait 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 so you weren't talking about solo a star wars film no that's not on there actually <laughs> no no it's uh currently on netflix what <laughs> well, yeah they, they have deals with netflix still in those movies anyway free solo is a type of rock climb where you climb without any ropes or harnesses. Is that that sounds type, incredibly unsafe? That's the type of climbing that was in that Marines commercial that played like 50, <laughs> oh, yeah. 50 times a day. The one, yeah, and he turns into the guy in the uniform. Yeah, yeah. in uniform. between ads of cow, in between Cowboy Bebop reruns. Uh huh. And other Marine ads where he's fighting the dragon. Mm, yeah, just totally a normal thing to depict your military doing. <laughs> What you don't you you don't think we can fight dragons in our military? Do you not support the troops? Represent Saddam. The dragon does. <laughs> I you know, sure why not? I a friend of mine and I used to work on this story together, and one of the things in this story was like they had kind of a hollow deck that these soldiers would try to train shit in, and even though it was never going to come up in their lives, like they would make them train to fight ghosts and dragons and shit. <laughs> with the premise just being like, we're going to make you deal with this shit, because if you can come up with the lateral thinking to deal with those problems, then you can probably deal with any other smaller problem. <laughs> Clearly, um, uh, the Marines ripped us off, and I'm going to sue. Yeah, that sounds... Uh, something else that you might want you might have considered suing over was these long load times. Except you can't do that. It's not how that works. You'd lose the, you'd lose the case to the many <laughs> lawyers that Disney Plus owns. Not even Disney itself, just Disney Plus. The Disney Plus legal division. Anyway, Disney Plus itself has even acknowledged, even acknowledged the issues on Twitter, giving a uh, hilariously deleted tweet. That mm, much pain read, we feel. You really went to infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't prepared for this, is what it should have read. Of course, if you're uh, more into the conspiracy theory mindset, some have suggested that perhaps this was all a ploy to get people interested in Disney Plus before their programming actually started oh. in the evening when more when fa- more families would be available to watch. So it's just a work. That's right. It was a swerve, brother. <sighs> now, are we going to talk about the fact there's like content, there's expiration dates on a lot of the content on Disney Plus? It's fine. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it's gonna go. Stuff's gonna go back into the vault, Stairmaster. <laughs> Just never, never own anything. Never have access to anything. Create right. artificial scarcity with digital files that can be replicated infinitely forever. It's normal. And also, and also the Simpsons got the Dragon Ball Z treatment. Perhaps the most grievous uh, injustice of all, of course, is messing with the Simpsons, the timeless institution that has only lasted nine seasons. Uh, The Simpsons, of course, is uh, a modern classic. The great American and, work, you might say. Yes, it's like a... It's, uh, the peak of our culture. It's like our generation's uh, William Faulkner. It's like our generation's infinite jest. 
which That's I guess right. was by William Faulkner. Um, it was not. Well, it's by uh, David Foster Wallace. Yeah, <laughs> two very different people from two very different eras. <laughs> it appears as though there's been some cropping of the aspect ratio. Yeah, so some jokes are messed up by this because the mm. way they zoom in to make it fill your widescreen that the episodes weren't designed for, like some visual gags are not in working order anymore. That's right, the mm. tall man is no longer visible. Missing from the archives, some information is. Yeah. It would appear that uh, this upsets, of course, Simpsons fans who are into this sort of thing. And, you know and also just people... This controversy mm. already happened two years back it's, when it came to Amazon. It's true. It also happened when they started Simpsons World, the online platform that has been <laughs> absorbed into Disney+. Plus. I'm pretty sure both times they course corrected, so I don't know why this has happened a third. Well, to be fair, uh, since the launch, Disney has announced that they will be giving the original 4-3 aspect ratio mm. uh, as an option for you to when you watch The Simpsons. So maybe uh, this is also a work. It's also a point that uh, other old school Disney Plus offerings like Boy Meets World and the Mickey Mouse Club are not in 16.9 <laughs> or 16.9. They're in 4.3. God's, Just the Simpsons God's aspect changed. ratio. That's right. That's the aspect ratio God is in. So when you get up in the heaven, are you going to suggest that God becomes 16.9? You gonna put letter? You gonna put letter boxes on God and cut off the top of his head and his feet? <laughs> when you die, your field of vision will slowly shrink. I mean, I, I assume that's how dying feels sometimes. <laughs> well, no, it just shrinks to four by three. Oh, okay. Look, you... this is clearly the largest access ratio Disney could afford. Should they therefore be made the subject of fun? Mm-hmm. That's, what the tall, that's what the tall guy says. <laughs> Hey everybody, look, it's the boy who podcasts all the time. Let's laugh at him. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, uh, yeah, all of this seems to have uh, done nothing to dissuade people from joining up on Disney+, Plus, which now has, which as of the day after launch, had over 10 million plus users. And all their passwords and information have been leaked. <laughs> wow. wow. That's right. Uh, I'm sure that'll be great and nothing bad will come of that. Um, of course, that doesn't count for things like duplicate subscribers or people who are only there for the three tri- free trial and are immediately unsubscribing. Mm. I what? That who? Could be. Me! I did that! They didn't get a <laughs> damn penny from me! Well, they got but now you can be used for... But Connie, now you can be used for the statistic where you're just one of uh, 10 million people. They're going to use you to justify overinflating their stock portfolio. Cool. I to love be fair, it. They would have done this anyway because they're yeah. a faceless organization with mouse ears. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later. Let's get on to another faceless organization, but not with mouse ears, with giant red letters. <laughs> Netflix. I guess that's just their mo- their mascot. It's just their logo. I thought <laughs> it's just I thought you were Netflix. I thought that was going to be Target. Oh, uh, no, they just... Yeah, Target. Uh, Daredevil villain Bullseye's favorite place to shop. <laughs> oh, man, this is the, the highest shelf we could get to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Netflix has also not been having a great week. Uh, although probably a little slightly better than Disney+. Plus. With a new <laughs> rival on the air, Disney+, Plus ha- has brought Netflix closer than ever to the brink of war. The streaming <laughs> war. Uh, and mm, be gone! The streaming wars have. And things have been uh, pretty alright for Netflix. You know, there's a deal with Nickelodeon, but there's also a deal with a government. Oh, That's right. Uh, Netflix CEO... Uzbekistan. Close. Uh, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings uh, recently said that... Uh, he was okay with uh, the Saudi government's current, uh, current current issues with an episode of Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj, <laughs> uh, centered on the country's politics. By which I mean they obviously asked them to take the episode down, and they did. 
Good. Uh, the episode is no longer to is no longer able to be viewed in Saudi Arabia. Hell uh, yeah! They sent an apology email to all the Netflix subscribers in yes. Saudi Arabia. No, in the world, saying that that episode was false. Oh wait! Oh, so we had not just to people local to there. They had to apologize to the whole world. Yes. Yeah, they had to say that that was a bad. <laughs> that was a bad thing that that show that is ostensibly about facts did. It was a goof. Man, what, what big dick energy Saudi Arabia has, honestly. Uh, no, where you just sir, can't that... even, like, release a show elsewhere in the world <laughs> that they don't like, and it's just like, hey, you fix oh, no, that shit. Oh, no, they'll put a 9-11 you on Twitter if you do and that. Ne- Netflix well, sir, will you... just, just, like, virgin walk away and be like, okay. <laughs> Stare, you made a joke, but it's not far from what actually happened. Oh, no. <laughs> they did take the episode down and then uh, apologi- apologized. Say it, saying, we're not in the news business. We're not in the trying to do truth to power. We're trying to entertain. The well, idea of the one thing would be... I'm, I'm really entertained. <laughs> yeah, this is very entertaining to me, an entertainer. Um, of course, uh, Minaj himself has essentially said he has no interest in going to toe-to-toe with a foreign government. Of course, why would you? Uh and that he's going to do the best he can to not poke anymore. Which sounds like he's been thoroughly <laughs> defeated. Cucked. In Cucked summation. By Cucked by Daddy Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Cucked by Mohammed bin Sal- In summation. Salman. Netflix, Virgin, Saudi Arabia, Chad's, and the Middle East is a land of contrasts. <laughs> That's right. Who uh, are we this... to judge them? And look, you know, Bernie Sanders isn't happy about it. <laughs> what? What? Bernie this Sanders is... tweeted about this news story. Whoa! People, what'd you say, people? Uh, <clears throat> An authoritarian dictator who murders journalists, tortures women as activists, and stars thousands of children should not control what America can and cannot say. <gasps> King. Yeah, go off. That's my dad. It's my people. Uh, anyway, um, Hastings' argument is that Netflix is more interested on in taking a more passive, uh, <laughs> i.e., less risky role in the political war. What? Well, he pointed to shows like Sex Education, a show that's about sex education, uh, uh, which the Saudi mouth? government allows to be broadcast via the serv- service as a way for more liberal values to find their way into the nation. Anyway, we've talked about Disney Plus, we've talked about Netflix, but how about the other streaming service that's soon on, soon to be coming to the horizon? The de facto number three, give or take an Amazon. HBO Max. This shit is so confusing. HBO Max is Warner Media streaming service that is not to be confused with HBO Go or HBO Now. This is this this is HBO to the max. This This is a home maximum home box office experience. This enters my ears and just turns into ash and like leaks back out. This is also not to be confused with Pepsi Max. <laughs> or Pepsi Cherry. Yeah, or Pepsi Zero. I wonder how long it'll be before we get HBO Zero. A, a streaming <laughs> service that has no HBO. <laughs> has zero content. Uh, but HBO Max has long been waiting for uh, the big thing that's going to set it apart from Disney Plus. Outside of, you know, uh, having HBO. I'm I'm <laughs> eager. What is this? What What do you possibly have? The perhaps a group two. of perhaps a group of colleagues, companions, companions, allies, allies comrades. who are always who are always there for you. And perhaps perhaps they're back oh, in reunion want... style. Oh, you That's mean right. like the song? Morning's That's right. here. The morning's here. That's right. The morning's here for friend for friends reunion talk. Uh, HBO Max is currently in talks with the core cast of Friends and the show's creator to put to put together some kind of get ready for this disappointment unscripted reunion special. What? Oh man, they got they spent all the money getting David Schwimmer and couldn't afford to hire a screenwriter. They're gonna yeah, make so much. F- fucking money and it's gonna be like worthless to watch (laughs) it's gonna be a bunch of actors sitting around being like that was a good thing we made 10 years ago 20 years ago man 
all, everyone's did, gonna walk did, up to David Schwimmer and kiss him on the lips. Did you did you notice all six of them are white? <laughs> wow. Did you notice that almost everybody on the show is white? Man, that's weird. I don't has anyone else pointed that out before? <laughs> I don't I think that's a new take. Are they gonna bring back Tank Abbott? No, I don't think Tank Abbott's uh, gonna fight Joey again. <laughs> But I'd be willing to watch. I just want the fans to know I still haven't seen an episode of Friends. Let's watch Friends. <laughs> when, right now. When is the Friends TV Tuners episode? Oh, probably uh, Christmas times. Yeah, maybe Christmas time. There you go. So it's... yeah, HBO Max, of course, has done the bare uh, is doing the bare minimum of work here. Uh, they're they're just contacting all the friends and pretty much saying, "Hey, you want to get together?" Can we can we um, give you like two point eight million dollars to enter this room and then like whatever happens happens we don't really <laughs> care whatever happens happens the friends box you go in they, these friends will go inside and we won't know what happens until they come out one of the friends has a gun <laughs> like it's, Ross just comes out covered in blood <laughs> which which friend has the gun you, ne- you never know Rachel. Oh, that- yeah, yeah, it would be Jennifer Aniston probably. Ross comes out just covered, cut up in scars and missing eyes. His eyes like Event Horizon. <laughs> yeah, uh, HBO Max has already shelled out forty uh, four hundred and twenty five million to steal Friends away from Netflix for five years. So that's like uh, a quarter of the Star Wars deal. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so putting this Friends reunion together is apparently very important for Bob Greenblatt, uh, Warner Brothers CEO. <laughs> Or, sorry, Warner Brothers Entertainment Chairman. I'm sure that's a different position. Chairman of the party. Uh, and apparently the whole reason that this is a unscripted sort of revival is that the Friends aren't in super, uh, the friends themselves aren't super interested in doing a revival. Yeah, no shit. Why would they? They made... They never have to think about working again. <laughs> they don't have to think. <laughs> Eventually, Ross... <laughs> Retweet re- if thinking. you don't think. Yeah. All they have to do is they could sit and just sit and just sit and not do anything. They don't have <laughs> they, to eat. They don't have to breathe. This they is will so just much get, money. Yeah, they'll just get p- d- piles of cash. Like I would, I would give so much for them to like try to make this special happen. And like all six of them show up late at different times. They just they all got like food that they came with. They ignore the food <laughs> that was set out for them. They're just on their own phones the other time. Oh, anytime, like, the himself. staff, yeah, anytime any of the staff, like, tries to talk to him, they just tell him to fuck off, and they, they just, like, fill news. out their hour and then leave. <laughs> I would love for them to hype up this reunion, and then the only person who shows up is the guy who played Gunther. <laughs> it's just the showrunners and Gunther sitting around talking about friends for an hour. You know, apparently to this day, like, the, the guy that runs the little cafe that was like their hangout spot like he's Regretted. sick and tired of people coming there because it's the friend spot and everyone just shouts norm every time he walks in okay i looked this up because <laughs> i was interested gunther uh a background character who's had a grand total of i don't know per season 10 lines mm-hmm. uh he shows up in most of the episodes of the show but he doesn't say much he makes on residuals just under a million dollars. A year? A year. Oh. Could you imagine? But what did you make up the action figures? It's gotta be that's gotta be alienating. <laughs> yes. He did he did the least amount of work as compared <laughs> to the rest of them. Even the morning the morning here guy had to learn a song. That's right, Gunther never had to learn a song. He just had to look weird at Rachel. Which is really easy. Yeah, everyone does that. (sighs) Anyway, it remains to be seen whether or not this revival, this quote-unquote revival, will actually happen, but, uh... Oh, man, what if they do the revival, and then Eric... But Eric Andre's, like, hiding in the rafters. Oh, he... Yeah, he's just waiting. <laughs> Friend, friends okay. of the show, Saudi Arabia, who we just spent a while praising in the previous news segment, if you could put a stop to this. <laughs> yes, if you could put a stop to it. By, by some means. Direct, certain direct measures. If you have a yeah. particular set of skills, then... <laughs> but, but please or don't tools. harm David Schwimmer. 
You can harm any of the other please, ones. Please, please. Okay. Keep, not David ta- Schwimmer. keep the bone saw away from David Schwimmer. We need him. <laughs> Our country needs him. We need anyway. him for Band of Brothers too. Yeah. The, sh- the Schwimmer edition. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's it for uh, the news. Let's take a quick second to uh, have ourselves a little smoke break. <gasps> and while we're having a smoke break, uh, listen to this ad for a fellow show on the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. As always, we're proud partners of the Big Heads Media Podcast Group, and uh, so is this one, Crazy Train of Thought. It's mm, a podcast. Hopping straight crack? I am. It's a podcast from the comedy group The Idiot Savants, and, uh, well, let's let them explain it to you. All right, everybody on the train, all aboard, you snooze, you lose. Buy my loot boxes. Not you! Get off the train! Don't let him on. Oh, okay. All right, listen here, Greenhorn. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to conduct a podcast. First thing you need to know is never stay on topic Ever. Uh, sir. What do you want? Uh, people are complaining about the Venom movie still. I don't care. Feed them Justice League or something. Get them off my back. Copy. But, sir, it says in the book that you need to stay on topic as a podcast. Screw the book, Greenhorn. The book was written by dinosaurs. Second thing you need to know is never report news that's not at least two or three weeks old. Uh, sir. What do you want? People are complaining about the Pokemon Go update. I don't care. Just... Gag them! Or something! Shut them up! On it. Uh, sir? What do you want, Greenhorn? I think the train might be going off the rails. That's exactly how we run this show. This is the Crazy Train of Thought podcast, brought to you by the Idiot Savants. Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. www.crazytrainofthought.com That's right. And that's something you can look forward to on Big Heads Media, along with us and so many other great podcasts. Hop aboard the train. Choo choo. Choo choo. Anyway. Going uh, off the rails on a crazy train of thought. Oh. <laughs> they, they didn't use that in the ad, actually. It's, Intellectual derailment. Well, you, they, they can have that one for free. There you go, idiot savants. <laughs> I hope you're listening. Um. So yeah, uh, that's it for that. Let's head to a segment near and dear to everyone's hearts. It's Trailer Blazers. Hit the theme, Stairmaster. Uh, Okay. Okay. I'm calling an audible. I'm being serenaded. Uh, welcome to Trailer Blazers, where we watch the latest and greatest in trailers. That's a word that would describe neither of the, the neither of those words would describe this. This is a bad. This is bad. What we watched here, perhaps the worst. But what? No, did we it? watched the trailer for DC Universe's Harley Quinn, the animated series that no one asked for. But it seems like it wouldn't be that difficult to pull off. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you on that. I'm gonna say that there is like a very <laughs> there is a subset of people that do really want this. And uh, before I can get into that, I have to point out that we have a problem in media now where no one can accept that they can like a show and like the character in the show where the character is a bad person. <laughs> it's either like the character is shitty and thus the show's bad, or the character is like a heroic role model and the show's good. And yes, the Joker conundrum. Yeah, it's like, it's like that tweet where it's the ending the Scarface and they got the emergency broadcast system and the little smiley <laughs> face showing what you're supposed to be feeling, which is a frown and disgust. Yeah. And so I, that. I guarantee there is an amount of overlap of people that like the recent Joker movie. They're you know they're very concerned about the effects that that's going to have on people. But also, they're just, like, they're getting major, like, fun girl power vibes from this trailer. This trailer where someone makes a joke about HPV. Where Bane makes a joke about HPV. Well, jo- Joker technically does. Bane That's just, okay. Bane just gives no, out he facts. Delivered, he delivered we literally did line. that earlier in this episode, though, so... <sighs> yeah, but ours was funny. Well, well I, that's, no. 
that's a perfect segue into what I was going to say is like the whole mood of this show is like Harley Quinn being kind of like Joker's shenanigans are cruel and tragic, but mine are fun and cheeky. It's like, no, it's the same thing. And so what you're saying is that Joker is Bill Clinton and Harley Quinn is Hillary Clinton. We solved it. Yeah. We perfect a model. Also, I and want it, to, speaking of models, this animation is not so good. Yeah, like, there's it's like very bad. There's not that many keyframes, folks. The thing uh, that bothers me most about it is that there's not very many keyframes. Yes, but every single blood splatter is like a really high frame rate <laughs> CG blood splatter. Well, they had a separate yeah. animator working on the blood spray. It, yeah, they I, got I their don't... blood spray direct from like all anime. For the uneducated, keyframes are a term in animation referring to the uh, pivotal the... frames of an animated scene, which artists will draw out individually. Most animation studios will usually use digital techniques to auto automatically generate in between frames or pat them off to uh, junior artists. Well, learning with Stairmaster. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like there was trouble afoot the moment that a talking plant showed up. <laughs> Is it a very funny accent, this plant, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird you can't not just at have... All, not at all potentially racist. It's weird that you can't just have Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy live together without there also being a man. A mm-hmm. man plant. <laughs> to backtrack a little bit on what I said, I'm totally fine with the concept of like a Harley Quinn show about Harley Quinn being like a fun villain doing bad shit, but... Mm-hmm. I just don't feel like that's the way the show is going to be received. It's going to be a matter of, like, it's good when Harley does it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, that's gonna, um, and there's going to be, like, a huge social justice warrior fake outcry. You know, like how the last Jedi had a very poisoned discourse. You think so this can... is going to have an equally poisoned discourse? Yes. Mm, I or feel like it's not going to be nearly as popular. So it's not Oh, that's... Gonna... Yeah. This, w- this will be forgotten... Very fast. Hopefully. Um, yeah, I imagine this will just be a thing. It, also, that's not Mark Hamill as the Joker, is it? No, it's, it's not even close. Like, they didn't even get Troy Baker. Yeah, they. I feel like Mark Hamill took one look at this and said, pass. So I guess we should, like, probably talk about the content of this trailer a little, maybe? Well, yeah. So oh, yeah, the, we opened with Joker flamethrowing people, which is kind of a bit... That's that's not really Joker's deal, I don't think. <laughs> Unless the flamethrower is some sort of cruel joke. Is it because he's on he's on water and he's flamethrowing people? I mean, they are on a boat. And yeah. the flamethrower does look like it's his mouth. And people that can afford to be on a boat should probably get flamethrowered. Mm, true. Uh, but yeah, at some point Harley Quinn realizes that the Joker's a bad guy. But she? She's not a bad guy? Question mark. <laughs> She's a bad lady. Anyway, so the the main thrust of this is that Harley Quinn is going to make her own supervillain group with some of the worst uh, supervillains, like people no one wants, including also, like a could... Wonder Woman bad guy who I guess uh, says the c word. <laughs> but isn't Australian, so it's not okay. Yeah, no one appreciates that. Also, can I say I don't like Harley's design in this? Like that hair dye doesn't seem to be working for her at all. Well, this is the Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad edition, so of course that's the model that we get her transforming into. Yeah, but we get like straight up Justice League Unlimited Wonder Woman in this. And also Justice League uh, Lex Luthor. Including perhaps the most groan-worthy line in the entire episode, where Lex Luthor says uh, the Legion of Doom, and Poison Ivy retorts with, I thought it was the Legion of Dildo. <laughs> Oh my god, this is How not is a Poison fucking... Ivy not already it's, in the Legion of Evil? It's not a joke. It's not a fucking list there's this is doing the thing that every like really awful, like no no jokes involved comedy trailer does. So it's like there's no there's no actual jokes, there's no setups, there's no punchlines. There's just moments where the music in the background stops, and that's how you know when you're supposed to laugh. Because the thing that someone Record said during that. Yeah. For... Yeah, we're, that's the only thing that's missing from this trailer is that. Also, and maybe thing, uh, you might be wondering how I got here. Weird thing, they got a Tom Hardy sounding Bane, but he's got his classic design. Yeah, I, I mean, I did appreciate face it. mask. I sort of appreciate that as 
potentially a gag. Hard to tell. It sounds like they just hired someone and said, you're playing Bane. He said, oh, so I talk like the movie? <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, this doesn't look good. Looks bad, actually. Looks real bad. It's poorly animated. Yeah, so it's d- like there's terrible like seven jokes. frames for each sequence. Of I movement. think... I think the only sight gag that I enjoyed the entire time, and also the only thing I enjoyed out of any of it, because nobody was talking, because all the dialogue is unbearable, um, is when Harley gets, like, kicked out of the train, and she's, like, falling down a cliff, and she's just, like, got her arms crossed and, like, pouting, and I was like, that's, that's pretty fun. That's That's all right. Yeah. And even then, it's pretty much just Looney Tunes. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know what? Looney Tunes, funnier than this shit. Um, (laughs) Hot take. How forced did all of the swearing feel in this whole trailer? Yeah, that's the other thing. The moment the plant shows up, that plant immediately is swearing. Drops an F-bomb. Yeah, they're all like... It, it does very much feel like this isn't a, this isn't your mama's DC Universe show. It feels like watching Fuck Batman all over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the worst thing the Joker should be saying is the word boner. Yes. He sh- yeah, he should be talking well, to I guess Harley Quinn I guess boner. Joker does say the F word in Joker, so. Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah, but that's clearly a different version of Joker. A more sick, twisted. <laughs> One more ready to help us rise up. A man who thinks tragedy is comedy. What a deeply disturbed mind. That Joker is a Joker who's willing to dance on some staircases. <laughs> to pedophile music. Yeah. Or well, music made by a pedophile. Well, might as well be pedophile music. Well, I mean, describing probably most popular music. If, I want to see, see that scene replaced with Billie Jean now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, that would probably work very well. I don't know. Did everyone see the edit of that commercial where they just like turned it into a like a Cialis commercial? Or something. <laughs> no, <what? laughs> because My it favorite. fits it too perfectly. Where it's just like guy like dancing down some stairs, and it's like that's <laughs> that's that's every that commercial is... where someone's like like a part of their body doesn't work anymore. Yeah, but it's the first okay. Act of, the first act of Joker is basically a guy with ED. Uh, my favorite edit of that Joker uh, dan- on Dancing Down the Staircase was they took out the music and replaced it with the whip and the nene. <laughs> oh, no. And it fits uh, too well. Anyway, uh, yeah, this this is not... This, this is pro- this is no good. I don't need this. I'm sure other people, like, desperately well, want it. Why can't they get someone funny to write it? But, yeah, that... Why couldn't they? Why couldn't they have a comedian? Why couldn't they have like comedians write it? People who know funny things, maybe. Mm. Not like a group of people who, I guess, were the bottom of the barrel. Like a, a lot of shitty comedy now was like done by rooms of like sleep deprived, de- uh, sleep deprived, <laughs> a punch up writers. Oh, and it doesn't really feel like they even got that. Yeah, it feels like they actually got uh, the people below the sleep deprived punch up writers. Like the people who don't get called to the punch up meetings. <laughs> they got a bunch of punch down writers. They just got some writers <laughs> from DC. Spend, sp- spend some extra money. Make sure we didn't accidentally make this too funny. <laughs> we don't want people to laugh, we want them to be amused. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much all we have to say on Harley Quinn. So let's give tune out. <laughs> so let's get to our main event. We watch Disney Plus's biggest show, The Mandalorian, and we're going to talk about it. It's a biggest Star by Wars default. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I, it's either that or the world according to Jeff Goldblum, probably. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's called, but yeah. That is what it's called. Oh no. That was the name of the Jeff Goldblum show, yeah. Who 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 are we canceling Jeff Goldblum over again? What it, what uh, was that about? Like he was defending some sex. Oh, Woody Allen. Yeah, yeah. There Woody you go. Allen. I hate you. Hate to see it, but <sighs> yeah, we yeah. we had one good thing left. You see, uh, women naturally have an urge to uh, accuse. Hey, I I hate men. this. I hate this. <laughs> Oh. Hey, look! Hey, look! Look! Uh, maybe we shouldn't treat celebrities like they're above us. Perhaps that's a problem. 
No, perhaps. But also, Tom Hanks is still good, everybody. <laughs> Wait, until Tom the Hanks one is time... bad? Tom Hanks is good. That's what I'm saying. And oh. until that time, we should all be able to, you know, still not well, change wants... anything about our celebrity culture. Well, he was in Forrest Gump. The only good celebrity left is fucking Smash Mouth. You mean Keanu? Well, yeah. <laughs> Not well, yeah. Fuck let's you. combine. That's let's true. get these two together, and oh, things no. will be okay. Yeah, we can get him to t- Smash to Mouth do the fusion is, dance. Smash Mouth's new lead singer, Keanu Reeves. Somebody once told me that round table is gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't the fastest gun. In the what's the hotel's? Fuck! I wasn't fast the enough. The Continental. Yeah, she, he was looking kind of dumb with a pencil in his. <laughs> 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 we, uh, well, let's more, no, let's, let's cut our losses. Now. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Anyway, uh, the Mandalorian. I'll, we'll be seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> the Mandalorian. It's the highly anticipated uh, Star Wars television show. Uh, it feels like ages that they've been ru- there's been rumors of a potential Star Wars TV show. <laughs> yes, since at least 2004ish. Yeah. And, Is this uh, the first like live action like, Star Wars TV show? Uh yes. T- TV show. Yeah, series. there's Yeah, TV series, of course we had the holiday special. Which gets Wait. referenced in this. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, that's the that's the exception. Uh, and that's of oh, course also the scrubs from history, made for TV movies. Oh, were those live? Those were live action, huh? Yes. Yeah, uh, but this is the first. Uh, this is the first live action television series. Uh, hard to believe that it's happened right now, but of course you need something big when you're launching a big. monolith of streaming. <laughs> Anyway, if they um, launched without this particular one, oh, no, it may as it. well not exist. Uh, I feel like it probably still would have done ridiculous numbers, but it probably wouldn't have been a thing. It would have been a bunch of people subscribing under under premise of not because there's anything they want to watch at the moment, just because re- it's cheap and they're like, hey, I guess. They can rewatch well, the Clone Wars, I guess. Here's the thing with a lot of people who I've talked to who have signed up for Disney+. Plus. There is a lot of things that Disney has purposely, presumably, not released on streaming throughout the years. Uh, nostalgic things. And so all that stuff is immediately available on Disney+, Plus, which means that it's attractive for a lot of different types of people. And including the really... The, are there really old racist things in, on Disney+. Plus? No, not no, 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 no. <sighs> well, actually, there is like stuff in like the stuff in Dumbo or like the Aristocat Aristocrat cats has a disclaimer at the beginning about uh, outdated cultural. <laughs> Don't worry, songs of the South will be coming once the. Uh, I doubt that one is ever slacks. getting. <laughs> you got, that you one's got never it. getting shown the light of day. Absolutely, but, it bet seven bucks a month just to always have access to that. Is and they're somehow going to get the day the clown cried. <laughs> where's, where's the where's the streaming service that's just a song for the south? <laughs> oh yeah, that's Disney. That's, that's Disney Plus Plus. You gotta sign up for Stormfront now. What you need is well, yeah. What you need is Disney Max, which is not to be confused with Disney Plus. Ah, uh, I get Max. it now. Yeah, you can get the Mirror Max archive. Anyway, this is a uh, yeah, this is a Star Wars show ostensibly, and. Uh, <laughs> As far as we can tell. Yeah. As far as, far as we can tell, there's star wipes and stuff, so it is a Star Wars show. And also, you know, stormtroopers and Mandalorians and No, they're not aliens. stormtroopers anymore. They're just wearing the armor. They're stormtroopers. <laughs> Once a stormtrooper, always a stormtrooper. Empire they're like those, expats. They're like yeah. those guys in the Syrian Civil War cl- clips you see on Twitter that are using, like, World War II weapons. Yeah. He's got the surplus. I spend so, a lot of my time on that part of Twitter, so I understand <laughs> completely what you mean. So yeah, we get introduced to our character, the titular Mandalorian, a nameless sort of uh, Clint Eastwood esque type. He's at least a for man this with a first gun. part. Yeah, yeah, he's a man with a gun and also a grappling hook and also the <laughs> taser thing. So he's Batman. Leading into this intro, we get a a not typical Star Wars intro and fucking good because 
that is way too peppy for the tone of this show, and I'm what, glad they want, didn't use it. You thought they were going to do an opening crawl? I thought they would. I thought they oh, didn't fuck. have the shame. I I went into this with extremely low expectations, and that was my first of many pleasant surprises. Oh, no, yeah, they changed I, it up for the show. It's like, the Clone Wars didn't have the crawl. It had a narrator. I didn't watch those, except for, like, a couple episodes of the animated one. Oh, that doesn't yeah. count. That's a different product entirely. I was mm-hmm. pleasantly surprised by this as well, because... Um, as much as I enjoyed in the moment both episode 7 and episode 8, it does feel like a little diminishing returns. Uh, and this feels a lot like just regular ass Star Wars shit. Uh, it helps that also it's the Star Wars stuff that I always seem to remember, which is all the grimy, gross stuff. That's the best parts. Like, the best parts of the Star Wars is just weird aliens Some being blue weird dude. fucking aliens. And blue-collar dudes with guns. Yeah. And um, this uh, episode, especially uh, the, in the, the scene in with him and the bounty guy in the ship, <laughs> reminds guy. me uh, of one of my favorite things that seems to be missed in most of science fiction, which is the Star Wars method of, like, babble. <laughs> of where a person will just say shit because to them this is normal things. I and we have that. no idea what it means. We can only assume. My favorite example of that later is like someone refers to a thing that they're offering someone else as a Camtono of Beskar. And in my notes I just put beside that like, I'll pay you a Zoom Bibble of Gorflumps. Fuck you. Right. And it can mean the same thing. I knew thing. it was going to be gore flumps, even though I'd never heard that <laughs> word before until now. It's in your soul. It's in all our souls. It can mean the same thing, but it uh, it's the way that it's like said by all of the people as if it is just an established thing that makes which it is, mean something. Which is weird, because in the Clone Wars, they just use a metric system. I'm pretty sure they use it in the original trilogy as well. No, it's different now. <laughs> okay. You need a you need a half you need a half glarflog of gleef bogs. No, fuck you. <laughs> all this all this babble first comes into place because some nasty aliens in a bar are threatening a very nice blue alien man. Yeah. He looks he's the same species as that fat guy who hung out with Palpatine in the prequel trilogy. I don't oh. even remember. I don't remember his name. Anyway, uh, the Mandalorian enters this bar, gets into an exchange with these guys, uh, brutally murders one of them. Cuts him in half with the door. It's yeah, we so don't... fucking unnecessary. Like, he has the guy tethered with a grappling hook, and you can just shoot the guy with the grappling hook. He's like, it's no, like... I'm going to pull the guy into where the door closes. It's and like make if the Han door Solo had shot first, that sort of level of callousness and brutality. Yeah. Um, it's a great introduction to this guy. He's not oh. a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He's the Mandalorian. Did we talk about the fact Disney Plus changed that scene again? We should. Machunk- <laughs> you mean the Machunky? Mach- Machunky, yes. Ma- McClunky. 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 Yeah. I appreciate that the most potent nostalgia that Disney Plus has given me is a redo of the Han Solo <laughs> <Anger>. Greedo debate. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they were going for. It's very meta, if you think about it. Yeah. Great fury, I feel. Um, yeah, it's weird that they made it in more incoherent than it was previously. <laughs> I hate that shit. I hate that shit so much. <laughs> and you apparently it... George Lucas got that in before Disney bought the rights. I hate that so much because then you can <laughs> ask George Lucas... Oh, you know why, why he did it. And, and he'll say, well, that was actually always how I originally went to, to, to it. And he, that's, just did to fu- he just did it to fuck with the fans. And that's, it's just, I. it takes a special kind of sociopath to just <laughs> look at someone dead in the eyes. fucking sociopath who built low-income housing in his rich neighborhood. Yeah. And I mean, fucking... Look. George Lucas is the prime example for death of the offer. <laughs> <laughs> like, at a certain point... We have to assume that he is wrong. And that <laughs> point so is Jar Jar Binks. He's so wrong, but with so much confidence that he will look at you in the eye and tell you, I intended it to be that way. And what that really translates to is like, you're stupid and I don't care that you're bothered by this. Yeah, <laughs> But you George can't Lucas do anything really about a, it. George Lucas is really the, pre, the, the predecessor of J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Who's when you worse? think about it, they have the same energy. 
I'm going to I'm going to say George Lucas is worse because that, I considering how leftist George Lucas is in real life. I I want to say I, George Lucas bothers me more because even if it wasn't for J.K. Rowling retroactively fucking it up, I don't think Harry Potter is good or ever was good. And also George Lucas is a good person outside of his life as an artist. Is he? I didn't know that. Yeah. You mentioned low income housing. That's cool. Yeah, so Maybe pissed he's... off all of his neighbors. <laughs> cool. All right. You know what, George Lucas, well, you get a pass. I'll allow, I'll allow it. I'll allow it, George Lucas. I mean, who among us wouldn't sell our uh, prized possession to a million dollar corporation oh, after they <laughs> hand us tons of money to just Appar- piss off forever? He apparently regrets it super hard. Yeah. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what? He's right. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, look, here's the thing. Maybe he's right, but I don't think episode seven would have been any better if he had made it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he would have made episode seven, so. Do you think he would have handed it off to someone else? No, I don't think he would have just died of old age before he did another Star Wars. That would have been nice. There, I, yes. I think I can't remember if we mentioned it in this recording or the Mystery Lost recording, whether Shop. or not it seemed nice that after uh, Episode 3 came out, yes. it kind of uh, just seemed like, huh, like, well, that's all the Star Wars. It's over. All right, well, no more Star Wars. It was the, it was a, an era where things could just be. <laughs> now we live in purgatory. Yes. Now we live in a, a constant state of uh, everything must be franchisable. Otherwise, we, its value is lost. We all live in like a cultural Sisyphean hill. I I have this feeling that my presence on the show causes tangents to be way worse <laughs> than normal. Because uh, we, we are still in the bar if we're going on what we're supposed no, to be recapping. No, this is what we always wanted. Keo's just got in the way. <laughs> Yeah, Keo wants Kio? to do Keo wants to do bits. What well, we coming, want are tangents. What? I'm coming for your bits. I'm coming for your segments. I'm coming for your fucking bullshit. Give me all the money. rent. <laughs> That's right, boys. Yeah. Connie's getting four dollars, and by boys, I mean the two people listening to this podcast. Yeah. One of them is um, me. <laughs> no. Oh no. We establish you're not a boy. <laughs> you're not our man. You're not our woman. You are something you know we what? can never understand. You're right. Hell yes. <laughs> And that's yeah. why I'm here to give you Star Wars opinions. So uh, we get he he collects his bounty. It turns out his bounty is the man he just saved, uh, which means which also is nice because it just gives him a pragmatic reason for killing all those dudes, which is that <laughs> they were messing with the, his money, <laughs> his paycheck. So um, hey, um, blue alien man, incredibly <laughs> fucking friendly and super likable, and I was. <laughs> fully prepared for him to just be around for the whole show i thought he was i thought he was going to be comic foil you weren't prepared for him to immediately become be be turned into carbonite i really didn't think it was going there he was so charming jump scare yeah okay so yeah um we get treated to this guy's wonderful presence for a little while he's funny he's there's a giant alien walrus as well yeah (laughs) We poke that it scene with an electric seems stick. like a little bit. That scene seems a little bit like padding, but also there's only forty minutes on this thing, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. And then episode two is like only twenty six minutes long. Yeah, I appreciate that this is the sort of uh, opposite of the Netflix thing, where everything has to be o- close to an hour or over it. It's it's good allowing yourself variability on like episode length is a good thing. Yeah. We aren't we aren't trying to squeeze in between <laughs> commercials anymore. We don't have to limit ourselves in that way. We finally learned the thing that HBO has been doing for at least two decades now. Well, yeah, but now this is streaming. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I appreciated the company of this guy until he was immediately sold as a block of uh, <laughs> metal. Metal. Uh, a fate, by the way, which is... Do they ever explain what happens to people when they get frozen in carbonite? They just hang out there forever? It depends on the people. I think that they go to space prison in this context since he's doing it for the guild. So it's Carl like we- it's like yeah, a Car- space jail before they go to space yeah, jail. Yeah, Carl Weathers mentions these people are like dodging bail and whatnot. 
So it's not like a Han Solo situation where he's just hung up as a trophy. No. Okay. Um, but I'm sure there's like horrific health side effects. I mean, I'm pretty sure Han was blind for the first <laughs> part of Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Uh, it's temporary. It's fine. Yeah, but maybe. Who knows what other problems he had? Yeah. Low sperm. I mean, count. he was still smuggling in his 80s when yeah. Force Awakens happened, so he could have. <laughs> Couldn't have got it that bad. Or maybe he yeah. did get it really bad, and that's why he needed to keep doing it. Maybe he was low T. <laughs> and that's why they de- Leia left him? Well, yeah, they only had the one kid. Because that's why Kylo him. Ren turned to the dark side. Beca- <laughs> you you weren't man enough, Dad. <laughs> I anyway. found your Cialis, Dad. <laughs> um... Who is this man in the face paint? Why is he dancing on these stairs? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we get treated to Carl Weathers, who is playing classic Star Wars name, Grief Karga. <laughs> That's good. That's fine. I love it. Um, he, I also love it you more your cargo. hearing it come out of Werner Herzog's mouth. Grief Karga. Okay. Um, you just said Werner Herzog. So. Yes. I, I need to, I'm glad I took notes here because I'm and I'm gonna paste my notes here because are you about right, to ask so who Warner here's, Herzog is? Here is here's my exposure to Warner Herzog. It's when you when you got him on the podcast repeatedly. He's oh. reoccurred he's reoccurred on here repeatedly. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I, I understand that was a big get for you every time that happens. Well, of like, course, when he shows up, big... he's one of the greatest directors of our era. Yeah, big viewership bumps every time he uh, he shows up. So, um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and post the note that I put while watching this character. All right, you All right. Want me to read so, this? yeah, go ahead and read that out. The Imperial old man's acting is kind of whack. Very one note droning. It kind of sounds like your guy's Warner Herzog impression. <laughs> Updated note. I didn't know until the credits that that was actually Warner Herzog. All caps. Yeah, this is. Um, <laughs> Warner Herzog is not much of an actor, but I think his voice sort of leads credence to uh, anything that he tries to actually do acting wise. It adds gravitas. Yeah, it's... there's a certain feeling to it, which is I... the lack of feeling. I had no fucking because I had no frame of reference other than hearing him on this. I don't know what to talk. No, never, oh, not fine. even once. Is All it? we've seen is what Lessons of Darkness. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, I've one day we'll Grizzly watch Man. Grizzly Man. One day we'll watch Grizzly Man. Well, I just said I watched it. Oh, maybe we'll hey. watch Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. A movie he Nicholas acts Cage. In. Anyways, that made me feel kind of weird about talking shit about his acting. <laughs> it would acting be really, <laughs> it'd be really awkward if he came back on the show right now. Look, oh, hello, my friends. <gasps> oh, he's appeared. Oh, I. Do you I think he heard what I said? Talking of my latest artistic endeavor, oh. the Mandalorian. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we've been chatting about it. We've actually been chatting about you in the show. That is to be expected. You were I, expecting this? Yes. Why is it called Star Wars when it is uh, merely a petty squabble for money? Well, when you think about it, aren't all wars that... <laughs> mm. Damn, you got Werner Herzog in a corner. <laughs> oh, he just, he vanished. He faded away. All his clothes He's are here. You've defeated him. Now I can make, now I can talk about, about his acting whenever I want. Wow. That's a, this is a big victory for the pod. Yeah, huge get and huge victory. Uh, yeah, I don't see how we could get any bigger gets. There's no other people with funny voices who could show up. Hey, everybody. <laughs> no, I meant... <laughs> Well, that is a funny voice, but I don't see how Bill Clinton's relevant. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he walked past the studio and left. <laughs> That's how most of your interactions with him have been. Yeah, true. Um, so, so yeah, we get uh, Werner Herzog gives our our Mandalorian boy a uh, a new a, 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 a new target. 
Uh, for which he receives some special. So, hmm? For which he will receive in payment a whole zoom bibble of gore flumps. Fuck you. Yes. <laughs> Stop yeah, he doing receives that. Besker, which is a special medal that uh, is. It's a Mandalorian thing, right, Stairmaster? Yes. Yeah. Stair wouldn't know this. It was not brought up in any of the. I watched the Mandalorian arc from season three of the Clone Wars. They did not mention Beskar very much, if all right. at all. It seems to be. Well, I'm assuming it seems to be an important thing because he he meets with the Armorer as their name in the credits. And uh, it seems to be a very, like, big uh, thing that he has gotten this and can potentially get more of it. It's Valerian Steel. Yeah, pretty much. To use a Game of Thrones reference. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. Um, that and the that... Mandalorian mentioned, we, uh, during this we get uh, perhaps the most unnecessary thing in this, which is the tragic backstory alert that we get here. <laughs> Uh, which is sort of a flashback to some of his... Uh, it's the Clone Wars. I just rolled you, my eyes as soon as I saw it and just tuned out. If you pause out. it, you can see battle droids. Here's the thing. I don't care. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, cool, I'm sure, for people who are like real into this. I'm okay with Star Wars. I grew up with it. I like it. I don't... In, in any <laughs> story, when you have a cool protagonist, the less I know about them, the better. And he is very cool. Like, he has... His tough guy demeanor is very convincing. Uh, in, in this very scene, there's a brief Mexican standoff. And one of his lines, they yell at him, We have y'all numbered four to one. He's like, I like those odds. I'm like, that's yeah. that's pretty cool. I don't yeah, need... Very cliche, especially but, but in very the cliche. first episode. I In the first episode especially, I do not need... To already be getting hints at the tragic backstory. I was character. I was disappointed because they were kind of hyping up there would be a big big surprise, and I thought there is this, at the end. I thought I thought this was gonna be it that like Ian McGregor was gonna show up, or maybe Hayden Christensen. You didn't think it was gonna be Baby Yoda? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So it. At this point, uh, it it does feel a little meandering, but then we get Nick Nolte, so it's all good. Uh, Nick Nolte shows up as an alien who teaches him how to ride the blur. <laughs> get on this goddamn pick! Get, God damn it, Mandalorian! You're gonna ride this blur. Stop your whining! I I can't do the I can't do the voice. That's um, sad. So- so yeah, we uh, we get treated to uh, this guy whose name I don't think is announced uh, as anything in the I credits. Think he's it's just the Ugnut. Yeah, um, and this Ugnut man uh, helps him fend off these Blurgs and then teaches him how to ride it. This scene in particular, uh, and I feel like this is the tone that they're sort of going for with maybe a darker sort of feel. This feels like Samurai Jack. Yes, it, it, I was going to say that. I That's was a good for the time comparison. To come up and say it. Fuck that you. Is, <laughs> it's literally. This feels very Samurai Jack. Like he's very competent, but then it'll randomly kind of yeah. eat shit for a little bit. I have it in my notes that it's really enjoyable to have a badass protagonist that is kind of a bumble king and isn't hyper competent at everything he tries. Yeah, it turns out soon as he's not like fighting people. Yeah, doing other things to get immediately and shit. like whatever. Also, whatever he has to put in effort into anything that isn't fighting people, he's kind of bitchy about it. Yeah, he's like, I don't want to like... fucking ride this thing. I don't want to fix my ship. Jawas took all my stuff. This <laughs> fucking this fucking sucks. Fuck I hate this my... shit. I hate the stupid egg. Like, I also as soon as not, This is not directly fighting someone. He's probably just like punching drywall. Like anytime <laughs> he's like <laughs> inconvenienced a little bit. I also really appreciate that there is uh, a thing with droids that he seems to have. And this is the type of thing I'm talking about. We don't need to know what, what it is with droids. I hope we don't learn. It's just he kind of doesn't like them. And that's yeah. fine. Um, so that all pays off once he finally learns how to ride the Blurg and gets taken to the bounty place. Uh, and that's the other thing. This is sandwiched in between scenes of him being competent. Anytime he's in a fight, he's really good. And in this final fight scene, which is really good, uh, or which is fun to watch anyway, yeah, uh, very he's, he's very he's very confident. Um, it kind of, like, 
He put all points into shoot gun. Yeah, I had seen a lot of criticism for this episode in particular that he seemed like kind of a doof, and I think that's the point. Yeah, that's what I like about him. He's like, because he should be a little bit of a doof. Mandalorians don't have culture outside of shoot the gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, it's not like Boba Fett wasn't the doofiest doof. The dude got hit, got murdered by a blind man. <laughs> <laughs> it sure did. Um, so yeah, he, he makes it to this, uh, he's scoping out the scene and there's a lot of people guarding this, uh, person. Um, and a, a, a bounty droid shows up, one voiced by, uh, Taika Watiti, uh, of Thor Ragnarok. And, and Jojo uh, Rabbit. And Jojo Rabbit, a uh, good movie, by the way. Um, what'd you say? It's a tune-in? I would say that movie's a tune-in, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this, this droid is called IG-11, and he rules, and it made me understand why everyone loves IG-88 so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this robot kicked ass. Um, the, the sort of casual way in which the robot kept trying to self-destruct itself was also a very fun <laughs> play. Let IG-11 self-destruct. <laughs> Just let he it blow let up. Um... The, and it's just a good fight scene, too. It makes yeah. both of them seem confident, even when they're <laughs> bickering with one another and the robot is being very pragmatic about having them murder itself. Yeah, we get this classic western where they're in the hiding behind the pillars surrounded by a dozen guys and then they wheel in a Gatling gun. Yeah, a, cla- a classic western finish, too, where the uh, cowboy uses a grappling hook to lasso <laughs> the grappling gun, to lasso the gatling gun. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a very dope scene. Uh, and then we get the, the final payoff here where they go in, uh, they enter the facility, and they find a, uh infant creature, the same species as Yoda's, mm. which uh, was supposed to be extinct, right? That's the belief. Not much lore there is. George Lucas kept it obscure. He did. Fuck. Yeah, you already bitched that one. Um, uh, the it... droid plans to kill it, but the Mandalorian decides to blast him, and I guess that's the last we'll see of IG-11. Do they come back from getting blasted in the head? He wasn't in episode two. Hmm. I have. I, yeah, I did not watch episode two. Wow, this guy... Look, you didn't. Been a busy uh, week. I've heard. That's I've heard good things. Well, I guess. All right. Well, we'll just kick you out, and then Sarah and I will discuss episodes. Just give two. me a quick. What'd you think? Uh, uh, there was a very Indiana Jones sequence in the second episode. Oh shit! <laughs> well, so I have. Um, I before we even get to episode two, I was in the middle. I was just trying to hurry up and make sure I could watch both of these. Because we, you know, originally we're going to record much sooner than we have. Mm -hmm. Shit happened. That's fine. I had to stop episode two within the first ten seconds (laughs) because I saw that um, a new pre-release beta of Sonic 3 got leaked and someone was showing that (laughs) off on a Twitch stream. And oh my god, there's so much stuff in there. I was like, Sonic is like surfing in the intro instead of staying on the plane. Yeah, he just surfs up to Angel Island. The animation is really unfinished oh, and janky. we knew about the surfing thing for years, but... I know about that. Uh, just different animations all over. But uh, also, the drop the, dash from Sonic Mania. They just, like, parallel invented it. Yeah, the, the, and a, and a mechanic be... that blows my fucking mind because that it wasn't even developed by apart, Japanese the... staff in a different country. It yes, was, this... That's fucked up. That Sonic Mania mechanics are just in... Were a scrapped Sonic 3 mechanic. Also, the Sonic 3 PC collection music was on there. And like, yeah, and it's all better, too. Yeah, since it's be- being pumped through that uh, good old FM synthesizer. And it also totally just ruined all those people on YouTube who made remixes of it in the Genesis sound. <laughs> they got wrecked. Oh, shit. You're right. I didn't even think about yeah, that. They got beat in a bunch... But yeah, I had to watch. Like, I had to stop what I was doing. Years. Watch a goddamn hour-long Twitch stream, 
And, and I took my Mandalorian, and then I went back to Mandalorian. Anyways, the plot of episode two basically is that some street punks steal the Mandalorian's tires and stereo. So he murders a few of them, but then they make him go get a ketamine egg from a cave to appease mm-hmm. them and give him back his stuff. This episode... And the baby Yoda eats a frog. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That we got sounds Vor- great. We got Vor content in here. That's cool and all. Um, you love to see it. You love to see it. This episode had, I want to say, like a good 18 minutes straight of no spoken dialogue at the start. <laughs> and Damn. that was actually fantastic. It was just like traveling, broken mm. up by brief bits of action. And Only baby noises I shall make. Mm hmm. Does he sound um, like sort of like a baby Yoshi? <laughs> a little he bit. Does he make any sounds at all? He makes a few baby noises. I mean, I haven't watched really the second Yoda episode noises. yet, but I'd be—I li- I am online, so I have seen Baby Yoda. <laughs> Everyone, so everyone's powerful. posting Even Baby Yoda. Side loves it. Yeah. He looks—he looks, he looks kind of gross in a screenshot, but he his, so his wise, manner, though. his mannerisms in motion are kind of cute. And I, I hate babies, so they made an accomplishment there. I haven't watched the episode yet, but I'm willing to offer this hot take: Baby Yoda better than Baby Groot. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. I mean, that's not even a bar. That's just that. That's the floor. That was the worst part of that. We should get Vin Diesel to voice yeah. the Yoda. Oh, I'm Yoda. <laughs> Sorry, let me take that again. Yoda, I am. Yoda, I am. <laughs> so, um, Yoda is family. I have some hot takes. Get the ketamine. You must. Oh, is it? Is it time for another segment? Another round of Connie's hot takes. It's not really saying, I just, I, we're moving on to outro opinions, yeah? Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't have anything else to say about episode two real quick, since you I don't watched know. it. I kind of, I kind of think we covered it. Um, <laughs> yeah, we brought up the ketamine egg. There is, actually, I want to point out my favorite shot in the series so far <laughs> is there is a part in which he is walking through a valley with, like, some cliffs directly overhead, and... He kind of stops, it sounds like, it looks like he kind of heard something, and you can see in the reflection of his helmet, just barely, like, figures taking a running leap over the cliff above him, like, crossing from one side to the other. Mm-hmm. It is incredibly well-framed, um, much like most of the show in general. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say that my hot take <laughs> is that this is the best piece of Star Wars media <laughs> Ever? It is. No, it is you more can't say in, it for two episodes. Uh, for for two episodes right now, I have been more entertained and compelled than I have been with any of the films. With any of the sequels? Yeah. Cut out. Yeah. Yeah, I like this more than st- I like the Mandalorian more than I like Star Wars. <laughs> wow. Now, you can put... That's a blurb you can put anywhere. I don't know if that's the blurb you want to put on that. Seems so, a bit self-defeating. The problem with that is that I'm still not going to recommend anyone gets it because I... Ethically, I don't think anybody should give a dollar to Disney+. <laughs> Plus. Um, as someone once told me as they approached me with a trench coat, I think it was Kyo <laughs> Rain, and oh, opened it... No, no, it was Kyo Rain, definitely. I won't no, I... implicate anyone that I'm in a voice chat with. Said that there are other ways. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If you if you like Star Wars, The Mandalorian is better than that thing that you like, and you should watch it. Oh, <laughs> and But the way you should do it is you should just wait for all of it to be out, because that's the best way to consume TV. And yeah. then go grab a free trial and binge watch all of it. And that is my recommendation for tuning in to The Mandalorian. If you want to pirate The Mandalorian, head up manscaping.com. No. For the f- <laughs> they got 720 rips. <laughs> 720p. That's, that's kind of low, but... Anyway, stare. Oh, uh... Yeah, I'm going to say tune out because of Disney+. Plus. But also, it's very good. It's extremely fucking good, and it's trapped <laughs> trapped on a platform that nobody should give money to. 
Yeah, uh, similar to what Connie said, I think this is uh, a very good show. Uh, I've only watched the one episode, so I'm not going to make the bold mm-hmm. claim of it being my favorite Star Wars thing in recent years. <laughs> you can't say uh, this is better than Empire Strikes Back. I can. can't. I'm going to kill I, you. I, I, kill me where I stand. All right. Ow, Ooh, I've been shot. With a giant boulder. Oh, I've been shot and crushed with a giant boulder. Unfortunate for me. First but, degree murder I have committed. But I've got this but I've got this stamina on XX I can drink. Oh damn. I'm uh oh, I'm glowing blue. Substantially. I'm glowing blue. I'm gonna do my heat moves on you. Dun, 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 well while this epic battle happens behind me, let me just say that uh yeah, I uh I really like this. I enjoy it. Um Whoa! The stream <laughs> The streaming thing is uh yeah, I mean, look, Disney Plus is a giant monolith that is uh, going to eat up all of it or all of the competition. At least that's what they plan on doing. Uh, so I wouldn't suggest paying for it unless you just <laughs> really you feel know. like it. Um, but uh, I would still say this shows a tune in. I don't think the streaming platform that it's on is necessarily my reason. Disney for tuning Plus out is of a it. tune out. Didn't, yes. But The Mandalorian, now that's a tune-in. In conclusion, the best of Star Wars show is a show of contrasts. <laughs> yeah, really, really is. But that sounds like a tune-in for The Mandalorian. It's I fucking guess. great. I don't roles. know what's real anymore. The acting is dream. good. The, the, the music is good. The, the tone is fantastic. It's like the best parts of the Clone Wars cartoon. Mm-hmm. But stretched out to a, presumably a whole series. There's there's money that someone is paid in at one point. That's like gooey. It's like a blue like yeah, gel money. Someone's played in like yeah. Someone is paid in what seems to be like fat. Wants and tropes. Like what do you what what else do you need? That's so good. Yeah, it's uh, money you can probably eat. More jelly <laughs> money. I need more jelly money on my TV screens. Yeah. Anyway, I like um, the I, we have to much go now. We'll I'm ready. I'm ready to get. Set. I'm ready to get paid in puyos. <laughs> Hell yeah, uh, yeah. Much like the Mandalorian, we must ride off into our next uh, adventure, uh, and I will be back. And that means we'll be back next week with more TV goodness. Uh, until then, keep watching. Bye. It's over. Always. Two there are. I tune in and tune out. I like those odds. <laughs>